Um, all right, so we're live with Mike from Michael J Design. How are you, Mike? How's it going? Cheers. What are you I'm drinking? Well, good afternoon. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I am drinking coffee. What? <laughs> That's against the rules. <laughs> we, uh, we, have, we have some tea in the process of being made. Nice, okay. I know, I feel like as the summer is like coming close, um, we are doing less tea drinking, I guess, officially, and doing a little bit more like alcohol drinking. <laughs> uh, so uh, I've yeah, got, yeah. I don't know if you can see this, Anthony, and I'll show this on everybody live, but Anthony makes what we call Tony's Teas. Um, and it's got, I think it has sweet tea vodka, lemonade, and unsweetened iced tea. And it's amazing. It's also like extremely dangerous in the sun when you're day drinking. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what we're drinking today. Um, okay, cool. So I want to thank you for joining me. Um, I have three kind of like specific questions for you. And, um, what I really want to do today is just kind of dive into those, um, you know, keep it short, but these are questions that I've kind of been dying to ask you as well. So I figured why not just kind of start with those and, and go from there. So the first question I wanted to chat about and the first thing I wanted to talk about was the process behind a lacquered finish um, on a wall and maybe even a piece of furniture because you and I chatted a couple months ago and um, I had talked to you about possibly doing lacquer finish on our vestibule and we never moved forward with it, probably because one, we were running out of time, me personally. And I, I was under the impression that it was super expensive um, just because I'm, I'm sure there's a ton of work that's involved. So I'd love for you to tell me a little bit about what that looks like. Yeah, sure. Um, we, we personally don't do much of it. We don't get a lot of requests for it either. Um, mm -hmm. But I think there is a misconception of people thinking that it's expensive. I mean, it is a process. It, it's not necessarily tedious. Um, well, it can be, but, um, but, but you really... You know, in a nutshell, it's, you know, you, you have your, your wood finish, um, you know, obviously there's various types of woods, mm -hmm. but, um, you know, whether it be, you know, ceiling wall or a piece of furniture or trim, um, you know, you're really talking about a variety of steps and the steps being, you know, mostly from the preparation perspective, um, you know, you're going to make sure that, you know, any kind of hardware, depending on, again, the, the surface that we're painting is obviously uh, removed. You don't want to get any, anything on the hardware. Um, you want to fill holes appropriately. Um, any kind of damage, you know, obviously you repair. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously you're getting into, you know, you, you start working on your sanding. You know, you want to get down to that bare material. Um, in order for it to take the color, depending on, you know, the color that you're going to be using. But um, from an you application... You use, like, a, a specific primer if you're going to lacquer something? No, you know, I mean, um, you, you can. I mean, there's obviously, there's a variety of brands of products. It really comes down to the material, the condition of the material, the budget of the client. Um, so, you know, in terms of a recommendation, there's obviously, it's really going to fall into, you know, you know, that particular scope of work. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, you know, ultimately it's, um, it's, it's applying, you know, people do a spray lacquer or you can do, you know, you can apply it with, you know, a specific cloth or a brush. Okay. Um, you know, again, depending on, you know, what your preference is. You can apply lacquer with a, with a cloth? Yeah, you can. I've saw, I've seen oh. people do it for, for smaller, smaller scopes. I mean, you're not going to take it to a, to a ceiling or a wall. If it's, no. You know, you know, <laughs> But basically, you know, 90% you're, you know, if you're not spraying, you know, you'll, you'll, you know, use a really high quality brush. Um, and, um, you know, you're, you're going in between a variety of um, just steps of lacquer, sanding, lacquer, um, you know, some people, you know, uh, use a tint. Um, so there's a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, at the end of the day, you're going after that real high gloss look um, for the most part. Um, we have a lot of clients um, that, that will try replicating that if it's not so much a wood. The best mm -hmm. thing to kind of compare it to from a painting perspective would obviously be, you know, a high gloss finish. Right. Uh, we have a lot of clients that uh, could be the exterior of their front door, um, 
you know, some do again, you know, a high gloss finish on the ceiling. I know you and I discussed the, the possibility of doing that with a previous client. So, so what's um, that, I guess if you, the lacquered looks very mirrored and almost like a heavy layer of shine versus the high gloss feels a little thinner, I guess, visually to me than like a, a full lacquer. Is that kind of the main difference between the yeah, two? Uh, yeah, because you're talking about, you know, you're talking about different material, right? We're talking about wood and how wood will hold versus, you know, you're talking, you know, versus the ceiling, you know, of, of sheetrock, so to speak. Right. So, you know, it is, it is going to have a different look for sure. Um, and that's, you know, that's kind of the, the conversation you have with a client when they're thinking lacquered from a wood material versus, you know, going and taking that high gloss finish into the, you know, into the master bedroom or, you know, into the living room um, right. inside the house. Um, but both, you know, obviously, you know, lacquer, it's a very, you know, it's a very high end finish. Looks very, very nice. Um, you know, again, a lot of people use it. Um, you know, we, we don't see too many wood walls around here and, and from our clientele perspective. Um, but, um, but yeah, very nice finish, very nice, um, you know, opportunity if it's there for the client to do. Yeah. And the same thing on the painting side, doing a high gloss finish as well. Uh, yeah. Can I, yeah. can I take any paint and, and lacquer a wall with it? Or is it a specific paint that I have to use in order to lacquer a wall? Um, yeah. I mean, there's a variety of different kinds of lacquer, different kinds of brands. So, you know, if your material is wood, you know, it, it really just depends on the type of wood you're using. Okay. Um, but you know, if you're talking about obviously just like a regular wall, like our client we were talking about, you know, obviously we would use, you know, just, um, you know, a high gloss paint. Okay, cool. Well, we're going to do one of those one day for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, How long does it usually take to get that process finished? Like, let's just say in a vestibule of the size that I have, which is probably about like a 10 by 10. Like, is that a multi, I'm assuming that's a multi-day probably week. Yeah. 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 Cause you know, you want to, yeah. I mean, we, we like to do, you know, we like to put into consideration dry times, you know, a lot of it depends on how the wood will take mm -hmm. um, and depends on how many coats we do and, you know, really the condition of the wood itself. So again, a lot of it really comes down to, you know, the preparation, how much preparation is involved, um, you know, the condition of the wood, how's it going to take, how's it going to dry, the condition of the dry time. Mm -hmm. um, and then ultimately, you know, how many coats we put on. So you know, it really depends. Every scope of work is different. Yeah, that's awesome. Okay, cool. Um, let's get into, obviously, the finishes of something like a lacquer takes a professional like yourself and painting doesn't always, oh, somebody says, Todd says, ask Mike what he has behind him on the wall. Oh, we already talked about this before uh, you guys all joined, but the, Todd, do you want to know about the artwork or do you want to know about the paint? <laughs> <laughs> Very different. What plays about the paint? <laughs> the paint color has actually an awesome name. It's called what was it? Um, we it's uh, it's. We 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 think we forget my wife and I believe it or not because we went through about forty different colors, but um, we think it landed on. Uh, it's a satin finish for um, intimate purple. There it is. I, my purple. wife is fact checking that before um, before we get in any trouble. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, thank you. We like it. We we had it in a previous apartment. We thought we had the same color in a previous apartment. We tried to replicate it. We misplaced the actual name a few years ago. Um, and when we moved into this apartment not too long ago, we tried replicating it. Um, but basically, it's our our dining room and wraps into our uh, open concept kitchen. So. That's hilarious. And then uh, everything else is a, a gray owl. And he said, why satin finish and not gloss or matte? Hi, Kat. So um, normally we would do a matte finish, but we wanted something a little more bold here in the living room and the kitchen since we were doing the rest of the apartment more of a neutral color. So we decided to just take it a step up um, you know, instead of doing you know, a matte or an eggshell, we did the satin finish. Um, and, you know, from a durability perspective, we could, um, you know, we could wipe the walls down, obviously, from a matte, an eggshell, or a satin finish. Uh, excuse me, woman, I think we have an answer on the paint color. Eminent purple. Uh, this is eminent purple. Oh, boo. Intimate purple is such a better color name. Purple. <laughs> 
but we there was an intimate there was an intimate purple and uh, <laughs> yeah. again we we literally i think we went through nine I think it was nine i think it was nine colors that we went through. <laughs> that's awesome and but, uh, but thank you yes it's uh it's a nice bold color um the, the paint came out real rich it was a very nice choice that my wife did nice cool thank you for that um, okay, cool. So <laughs> Todd doesn't stop asking questions. Um, and since you mentioned, what is that artwork? <laughs> <laughs> um, so Not the artwork, <laughs> the, um, the one above my head here is my wife in Melbourne, Australia, when she and I uh, were traveling um, years ago in my corporate world. And um, this one over my shoulder here is me up on the Great Wall of China after I climbed to the top, which that is cool. Fun. Very moody and artistic. I like it. <laughs> Thanks, Todd. Thanks for pointing that out to everybody. I appreciate <laughs> you tell. Um, Kat says, if I want the walls, ceilings, and moldings all the same color, what type of finish do you recommend? Uh, yeah, I mean, look, I'm... Um, during my consultation process, I'm a big believer in really trying to understand what the client wants, not so much what we, we could recommend. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, just from a, a general standpoint, you know, it's, it's always or most commonly recommended to use an ultra flat or a flat on the ceilings, um, white, which, you know, I'm not against putting color on the ceiling. Um, from a wall perspective, again, really depending on the room and the traffic of the room, um, some people prefer flat, others prefer matte, um, matte and higher. Um, I never like to go any higher than really a satin. Um, but again, those give you the durability characteristics of wiping down if you get a scuff mark or a stain. Um, and, you know, bathrooms, you know, you could do an eggshell or higher, um, again, from the moisture capabilities, you know, you want to make sure we're blocking out moisture. And, and there's a variety of different paints and, and you know, moisture blocking paints out there. So um, really, it depends upon, um, you know, the scope of work, we would obviously, you know, do, do a walkthrough and determine what the best option would be from a finish perspective. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we would never, we never hold our clients, you um, you know, to a specific finish, a specific sheen, and most certainly a specific color. Yeah, you give your clients creative freedom, which is great. <laughs> uh, absolutely. Look, at the end of the day, they're the ones living in it. Um, chances are they just invested in a lot of money into owning it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it, it's what they want. Everybody has their own style, their own decor. So, you know, we, we give them recommendations and, and we pull people like yourselves into the conversation as well, professionals from a design perspective. And, mm -hmm. you know, but at the end of the day, it's, it's really what the client wants, what, what they prefer to see every day. Yeah. Let's talk about level five finishes, because when I first met you, um, I didn't actually know what that was. And I remember you guys were super busy and you were like, I'm looking for level five finishers. And I was like, what? the heck is that? So tell me a little bit about what a level five finish and why that's kind of integral to what you're doing every day. Yeah, sure. So, well, uh, we're actually not doing it every day. Mm -hmm. um, the, the level five finish is, um, it's really about the preparation of a wall from, from basically, you know, bare, bare construction to, you know, putting the, the coats of paint on. Um, and a lot of it's just, this, this really just comes down to preparation. Again, you know, the, the final application of your one or your two coats of, of paint color and finish is, is really like the gel on the tires after a car wash. But the, the real important part of, of any paint job is all about the preparation. Um, you know, the, the, the spackling, the filling of holes, um, you know, caulking, et cetera, sanding, obviously, sanding and priming, which we'll get into in a little bit. But mm -hmm. um, basically from... from a level five finish, if you have like your, your separate levels, right? So level zero is basically putting sheetrock up on the wall. You have, um, you know, basically no tape. Um, there's obviously no spackle. There's no primer on the walls yet. Um, that'd be your basically level zero. Your level one um, is when you start basically incorporating your tape um, on the joints, um, you know, the seams, et cetera. Um, and then you bring yourselves into basically level two, level three. Um, you know, you're putting in 
basically uh, your screws. Your, again, you have your tape and the joints and any angles, and you start with a, a, a real thin layer um, of a spackle, which again, could be a variety of different spackles. Um, and then uh, you, know, you come into basically your level four, um, you know, you're covering your, your screws, whatever you're using to fasten the boards, um, you know, again, applying another, you know, thin coat of, of spackle. And every time we're applying, we're obviously sanding down and then reapplying, sanding down, reapplying. So we're getting a nice, real smooth finish. Um, level five brings us to like a skin coat. Um, and then again, um, you know, sanding it down until you're getting that that first primer application on. So it's really about preparation. Um, if you just visually think about putting the sheetrock up, fastening it, using the tape for the joints and the seams, and then you're applying a few layers of the sheet of the, uh, the spackle, the joint compound, mm -hmm. sanding it down until it's real nice, smooth, and even. If you can't see anything other than the wall itself before you put on your primer, and then obviously you're finished. So it's it's in a very important process. Obviously you see it from, you know, new construction on up. Um, when we're going into previously, you know, lived in, a, you know, apartments, you know, we're, we're usually seeing, you know, we're at like the level three or level four part. But for us, you know, in these particular instances, we're going in doing some repair work. Um, applying our spackle, um, you know, retaping if needed, yeah. and, you know, the variety of coats of spackle that are required, and, you know, obviously sanding in between before we put the primer on and then the finish. So that is a specific request that comes through, right? Yes. Um, yes, there's clients. We have a client um, that we're going to be uh, starting in June that um, has a they have a texture, they have a, their whole apartment's textured. They had a decorative artist come in years ago and did a, a faux painting, a faux, um, faux finish. Mm -hmm. And um, the, uh, the particular client um, wants the, the entire apartment skim coated. Um, oh, wow. That's which, a lot of work. <laughs> it's, a lot, it's a lot of work, uh, very tedious. Uh, but again, it requires not just putting... Um, putting your 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 skim coats on but obviously a lot of uh, a lot of sanding in between um again every every project is different every scope of work will vary um you know for us it's you know it's usually just standard spackle some tape um filling some holes some larger cracks a couple of a couple of layers of spackle um and in between again sanding before we put the primer on gotcha so, when we're when we're you know partnering up with some new construction contractors, um, that's when you know in in your crew you really need to have um, very detailed and uh, very experienced level five finishers. Interesting. Okay. Cool. I always thought it was just <laughs> to be honest, like level five would be the nicest finish, and level three would be like. This, the oh. average finish. <laughs> you can kind of think of it that way. If you stop at level three, you're not yeah. going to have the smoothest of walls. Right. So, yeah. Gotcha. Is that difficult? Like you would never do that then on a renovation or like an old home? Or could you get like a level five type of finish on an old home's wall? Or is that like not an appropriate way of thinking about level five? Um, well, I mean... Basically, if you're looking for like that smooth finish, and again, depending, it's it's hard, yeah, you know, depending on obviously the texture of it now and the, the condition of it. Um, you know, a lot of it could just be a matter of you know, spackle sand polish, spackle sand polish. So, um, again, it really depends on the condition of the wall itself. Um, you can think of it that way, but normally it's kind of, you know, from, from the ground up, from con new construction up, um, is the yeah. way, you know, to think of it. Yeah. Cool. Um, okay. One of my last questions for you, and I actually have one more, but if anybody on IG live has anything, um, Facebook, I can't see at the moment, but, um, and Anthony's on. So if Anthony has any <laughs> questions for you, um, so, uh, the importance of a good primed wall. So I feel as though I'll walk into a space and um, sometimes I'll see uh, like the sheetrock wasn't really installed 
amazingly well. So I think it's on the painter to kind of, um, you know, make sure that the walls are nice and, you know, prepped for paint that'll look good at the end of the day. Um, but I do know that, you know, if you're hiring just kind of a painter off the street, sometimes they skip the idea of a primer or at least making sure the wall is primed for paint. So tell me a little bit about your process for priming, priming walls for paint. Yeah, sure. Um, it's, it's sometimes um, a misconception, um, but you know, to ideally, you know, again, depending on, you know, the, the condition of the walls, um, some walls may not have been painted in a really long time. So, you know, you go to put that, that paint finish on, it could soak right into the wall. Um, you really think about the primer as your base coat, whether it's new construction or, you know, paint's been on there for a few years. Um, you know, a lot of times if you're putting obviously a lighter color over a darker color, um, you want to prime. Um, you know, your reds and your yellows usually are, you know, the, the toughest colors to paint over. So it's always best to just use a primer. Mm -hmm. um, some people get confused on the paint and primer in one and one coat finish. Um, you know, there's paint manufacturers. They obviously know what they're doing. Um, you know, we as, you know, our company, we always like to recommend, you know, a primer, depending on the condition, it's not always, you know, we don't always have to prime, mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, we like to use a specific product that um, is basically a, a, almost creating a new wall foundation before the paint is applied. And, um, you know, it's basically just giving yourself a clean canvas, a nice fresh canvas and, um, and getting that, that final coat of color um, of choice by client onto the wall. Um, obviously when you're using, you know, your sheet, uh, your, um, excuse me, your spackle, um, you know, sand down and prime it. Um, but yeah, sometimes clients will ask, you know, do we have to, you know, prime the entire apartment? It's going to cost me so much money. Um, you know, sometimes the answer is yes. Mm -hmm. Um, but for the most part, we're okay with two coats finish. Um, if there's a real dark wall, again, we'll recommend just a primer on there. And then there's yeah. a clock that says, well, the paint can says it's paint and primer in one. Why do we need to prime it? And then, you know, we'll go into the consultation, go into a little further detail as to why. But um, always good, always good to make sure that your walls are prepped um, for paint, whether you're using primer or not. Yeah, the paint and primer in one is always something I feel like I get questions about, or at least, I don't want to say push back on, but I will, you know, people will ask like, well, why do I need this extra primer? He said, you know, the paint guy said it's fine. And it's like, well, ask Mike. <laughs> Sometimes we just avoid the whole conversation and we just prime the wall. And we don't even tell the client and, you know, it's kind of our just good customer service freebie because at the end of the day, you know, it's going to be our, it's going to be our paint job that we want to look great. And yeah. They're going to call you with a complaint. <laughs> exactly. Might as well do it right the first time. Exactly. What are some of your um, favorite paint colors? And I didn't ask you this before we joined, so this is like um, paint colors or yeah. brands. So, so colors. Colors. Um, yeah. Sherman Williams, Benjamin Moore. Yeah. Like, what are your favorites? So um, I am a, a big user of Benjamin Moore. Mm -hmm. um, I. I I just, I like the product. Um, I've always used them for years. Um, Sherwin-Williams is also a very good product. Um, between the two of those, um, I use quite frequently. Um, the, the color schemes, obviously, the trends, you know, you kind of you kind of ride with them sometimes. Other times, you know, you, you kind of like your own colors. Yeah. Um, really, it depends on, you know, for me, it's, I go into a client's house and every house is different and they all have their own, you know, decor and personality. So um, it's always interesting to see the color choices that, that they bring to the table. Mm -hmm. um, for me right now, um, I'm, I'm a very, I like neutral, ex except for the color behind me. Um, <laughs> always Intimate purple. <laughs> Yeah, well, I like I like neutral. I mean, the the rest of our apartment is very neutral. Mm -hmm. We always like to throw in an accent wall or two of pop of color. Um, 
I can't really say I have a, a favorite per se. Um, I've always been into the, into the navies, you know, the dark blues. Um, but you know, sometimes, you know, you want to throw black on the wall or black on the ceiling, as you know, yep. um, you know, it really kind of depends upon, um, you know, the apartment that you're painting in terms yeah. of giving recommendation. Mm -hmm. um, what's you your, know, um, what's your, do you have a favorite black paint? Mine is tricorn black by Sherman. I, I, I was going to mention that because you <laughs> got me onto that. Um, we did it for a client that, um, that we shared and yep, um, Laura. Yeah, yeah, I, I wound up taking that color. Um, my wife and I loved it so much that we took it into our apartment as well. And we did, um, we did our, our foyer, our entryway. Yeah. That's awesome. I love we, did that. it, we did it three quarters of the way up. Um, yeah. so yeah, I'm working with a client right now that is um, also contemplating some black. So we're going through a few, but, um, you know, there's so many colors out there and there's so many different names that you could really just go get lost. You go down a rabbit hole, you know, through the color wheel for. And there's of. also just like, I remember when my parents, so I'm at my parents' house right now and, um, like they've built two custom homes and we've always talked about how many varieties of white there are, like how many different paint colors of white. And I don't think I've ever really appreciated that until someone asked me for like the perfect white, but the perfect white doesn't exist unless I know what other colors are going into a space because it could be a creamy white. It could be a very classic white. It could be a clean white. It's just like, <laughs> great point. Um, Literally before you hopped on this call, um, I was in discussion with another potential client that we're, we're working on finally finalizing the agreement and we're on basically, you know, the color consultation and, um, you know, it, it's, it's when the clients, oh yeah, we just want it white. Um, and it's but like yeah. the worst phrase. <laughs> it's like sometimes do I, do I get into the conversation and say, okay, well, what white? Or do I just say, okay, I'm going to choose the white and, you know, <laughs> and they're not going to. <laughs> but now at the end of the day, um, yes, there's, there's thousands of whites, um, and you know, it goes on both sides of the spectrum. You got, you, know, you can go on your creams, you can go on your, your grays. Um, but yeah, it, it certainly, um, certainly does, you know, make you think about how many different colors and then the color combinations that there can be out there. And, and that's what makes it interesting for me, um, as an art major, just always been interested in the paint and the colors and, and you know throwing them up on the wall um it's just something we've always enjoyed so yeah do you um do you do color consults for clients we do yes um you know a lot of times um they know what they want and you know again just like i had mentioned in the beginning of this um this interview was really you know we we're never telling them the colors it's you know show me your decor, show me your furniture, what's your style. Um, and from there, it's, you know, basically, and, you know, what, what colors were you thinking? And then from there, we work together strategically to come up some of the best options, you know, get some samples, throw some samples on the wall. Mm -hmm. um, you know, at the end of the day, it's paint. It's, 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 an, it's an easy fix. If, if we put up a sample and you don't like it, you know, we'll, we'll keep going until you like it. I mean, yeah. you, know, um, you know, it's, it's not complicated to, um, you know, to, to put the paint on the wall until they get what they want. And that's, and that's what we're going for. We're going for what they want based off of their personality, their decor. So, yeah, uh, you know, we'll, we'll do it during the walkthrough process. Usually we'll have the color consultation or sometimes, um, you know, after the, the walkthrough and, and we finalize, you know, on some of the numbers, then we'll start talking colors. Um, it really depends upon, you know, where they're at in their selection. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, Mike. Last question. What kind of coffee are you drinking? <laughs> what kind of coffee are you drinking? Since you broke the rules and you're not drinking tea. <laughs> yeah. So um, we actually have um, homemade. Um, it's actually a decaf. It's a half decaf, half caffeinated because um, my wife, as you know, is eight months pregnant. So she is um, limited as the amount of caffeine she can have. Uh -huh. So um I believe this is, is this the, uh, the Starbucks one? Yeah, it's, 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 you know, Starbucks, half, half hazelnut, half something else. Where nice. Anthony loves Starbucks coffee, so. He it's it's whatever I ran into the store and grabbed. <laughs> yeah. 
The lines for Starbucks have been out of control. I don't know about like near you guys, but they've been. Oh yeah, uh, it's been, uh, it wasn't, it, this is just from the bag. I got it at the, the grocery store and, you know, brewing our own here. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. But yeah, to that extent, you know, for, for those watching and joined, um, you know, everybody be well and be safe and, you know, hope everybody's feeling well. Yes. So. Well, thanks, Mike. This was fun. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And um, I always appreciate the partnership with uh, Downtown Decorators. Thank you so much for all the referral business. And um, it's always great working with you guys. Um, you know, your Likewise. And your vision are just, it's a lot of fun to work with you. So well, I appreciate you never telling me no. <laughs> Like the That's time I said I wanted to paint hardware as well as access panels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, at the end of the day, uh, you know, it, it's got to be fun for everybody. It's hard work and it's, you know, long hours and it's, it's labor, labor intensive. But, um, yeah, you got to make it fun and make it fun for the client and make it fun for your partners. Otherwise, what's totally. the point? Yep. Cool. Well, thank you, sir. Cheers right. to you. Cheers, Have everybody. a good weekend Thank you. And, uh, or the rest of the weekend. And uh, I'll see you on Wednesday at BNI. Right. That's it. Thank All you. Right. Have a good one. See ya. Bye.